here are some sick oysters. Just what made them sick, and just how they are to be cured, are questions that stumped an entire oyster industry. The trouble started down in Louisiana on the Gulf of Mexico, where the Louisiana oyster fishermen claim that oil production was killing off the local oyster population. The oil companies didn't agree, but they decided to look into the matter. So they started what developed into a $2 million oyster research program. Scientists went out to the bedding grounds where they collected buckets full of oysters and then brought them to a special oyster research center of Texas A&M College, one of the laboratories established for the oyster survey by the oil companies. In the research laboratory, every type of condition is created for the oyster patients. A blanket of crude oil is poured directly on the water. Water is jetted through oil for six months. Oil drilling mud was emptied into the water. Even dynamite charges were exploded near test oyster beds. Every possibility was explored. After years of study and progress, the results were in. The test oysters showed no ill effects from oil, even under conditions which far exceeded those ever present during oil production. As a matter of fact, the test oysters were so happy, they brought forth new generations to share their luck. They never had it so good. Well then, if this wasn't killing the oysters, what was? It took time and money to find out and the scientists continued their progress. Oyster tissues were prepared for intensified examination and study. No possibility was overlooked. Finally, the real enemies are isolated. The most vicious villain of the lot is Dermocystidium marinum, a species of fungus that is bent on destroying the Louisiana oyster. It was further found that natural changes in the Gulf Coast and man-made improvements such as levees, together with climatic changes, were seriously affecting the proper mixture of fresh and salt water in the oyster bedding grounds. All of these factors were contributing to the reduction of oyster population. Now that the true causes were known, action could be taken. These major conclusions of the oyster research program are cheerfully turned over to the oyster industry. Why, you may ask, why were the results of two million dollars worth of research given to the oyster industry? It's because oil companies believe that maintaining good neighbors is just good business. As long as business and industry are free to lend a helping hand to each other, then everyone benefits.